previous video of this series, we assembled the CPU board for the Mark 8 mini computer. This completed the assembly of the original boards. With all the boards now assembled, the only remaining component to build before testing the computer is the switchboard. Granted, we can test the computer without actual switches, but manually simulating their function is a tough task. Therefore, the plan is to build a board to hold all of the Mark 8 switches before we started testing the computer. I designed a schematic for a switchboard, as envisioned, incorporating 16 switches for the data address and uh, control lines, and also a power switch. The schematic also features LEDs, serving as indicators for the positive 5V and the negative 9V lines. The PCB layout closely resembles that of the so-called original Mark 8 mini computers, although I don't believe there was an original switch layout. The 8-bit data and address lines are situated at the top, with all the remaining control switches positioned below. I referenced Brian Blackburn's document while designing this switchboard, resulting in a very similar appearance. On the left side, there are two LEDs, one for each voltage line, and beneath them is the power switch. Once the schematic and PCB were finalized, the actual board was manufactured using JLC PCB. I still have quite a few of those boards remaining, so if you're interested in purchasing one, I'll leave the purchase details in the description. Before populating this board with components, we need to create a front panel to correctly space the switches and LEDs. The case drawings that I created will be used to determine the dimensions of the front panel. This is a little preview of a future video where we'll be building the case for the Mark 8. For now, we'll use the dimensions for the front panel, which are 10 and a half inches long by 4 and 3 quarter inches wide. The 4 and 3 quarter inch dimension is not on the drawing, but it can be inferred from the drawing by doing some geometry on existing dimensions. The case will be constructed with maple boards that are 3 quarter inch and 1 8 inch thick with the front panel being 1 8 inch thick. I will mark this blank panel with the front panel dimensions and cut it to size. Once the board is cut, we'll use the PCB printout as a template for drilling holes in the front panel. The switch holes will be drilled with a quarter inch bit and the LED holes with a 5 16 inch bit. We will first drill pilot holes before using the larger bits. Now that the front panel has been drilled, we can insert the switches and LED holders into the holes. The switch with the silver leads is for power since it's designed for higher voltages. There are six momentary switches. One for the load high address, load low address, examine, deposit, step, and interrupt. The remaining switches are single pole double throw. Refer to the schematic for more information. Place all switches with the groove facing down, except for the two momentary switches used for the load high and load low addresses, which will be toggled up instead of down. Lightly tighten the nuts on the switches to keep them snug while soldering. Insert the LEDs into the PCB board and place it over the switches on the front panel. Ensure the correct orientation of the LEDs. The minus 9V LED should have a longer lead facing ground. You may have noticed that I'm missing one switch. I accidentally dropped it and couldn't find it, but I'll install it later. Place the front panel upside down to let the LEDs fall into their respective holders. We can now solder the LEDs and switches. Once soldered, the PCB can be removed from the front panel, which will be set aside for when we build the case. We can then solder the remaining components to the PCB. 
J1 will be used to connect the switches to the computer, and J2 will be used to connect to a high voltage hot wire. The switchboard is now complete. I finished it by soldering the previously missing switch and connecting it temporarily to the Mark 8 mini computer using jumper wires. I'm using a breadboard as a middle connection for flexibility during testing. For connecting the switchboard to the computer, refer to the original switch document, which describes each switch connection. And also a document created by Brian Blackburn, indicating where each switch letter is located on the top connectors of the mini computer. For instance, the load address high connects to the letter N on the mini computer, which is the third pin from the right on the address latch board. I will leave a link to the document in the description. The switchboard and temporary connections are now complete. We will continue with the testing of the Mark 8 mini computer in the next video, so don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be posting a video about it soon, and I don't want you to miss it.